physios and this is James and today we're going to start chatting about flat feet. So flat feet can be separated in two different, uh, two different flat feet types. So we have a genetic flat foot and we have an acquired flat foot. So the genetic flat foot is where you're born with a flat foot uh, and what we mean by a flat foot is the arch of your foot on the inside uh, is completely lowered and in some cases touching the ground. Uh, overall it's generally not a problem. Uh, what we're interested in is how your foot moves rather than the static position of your foot. There is some low level evidence to suggest that if you have a genetic flat foot because of the positioning it can change where the force goes through your leg. So it brings force more towards the inside of your leg and has the potential to overload uh, the medial compartment of your knee. And there is some evidence to suggest that this can increase the rate of arthritic change within the joint. But this is still very much debatable and is not an absolute for everybody that has flat feet. For those who have genetic flat feet, what we look for is when you go up onto your toes, does your heel bone turn inwards? That indicates that you're generating some stability in the arch of your foot. And what we normally observe is uh, those who are of Afro-Caribbean heritage typically have uh, genetically flat feet, but they're exceptional athletes uh, when it comes to sprinting and running. So it's not always a problem to have a flat foot. It can be worthwhile talking to a therapist about it, but keep in mind uh, that you don't don't normally develop the arch of your foot until you're five or six years old so what we ask parents to do is hold off uh, coming in with your children until they've reached that age unless they're already experiencing pain in the foot. In an acquired flat foot, that can be where you start to develop the flat foot over time. So we can get this with degenerative changes around the foot. As we get older, we lose some of the support on the inside arch. We can also get that with a post-tendon dysfunction, which we have linked below, and that is where we start to acquire this uh, because of an injury. So with, similar to, as James had mentioned, sometimes we just guided by the symptoms. So if a patient is coming in with a lot of medial overload or some forefoot overload, that's where we might start to intervene at looking at trying to use orthotics to offload the area and start to treat it in, in, in those acquired flat foot patients. In patients who have uh, stage 3 to 4 posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, uh, these cases uh, don't react or respond very well to strengthening exercises as the tendon has become too elongated and it's, it's a struggle to get a contraction there and as John mentioned, in those cases we typically look at supportive footwear or insoles just to raise the height of that medial arch that tends to reduce the pain in the joint. Other, in other cases, uh, patients can develop arthritis of the ankle joint. This, co this causes a change in the position of um, the medial arch of the foot, leading to an adult acquired flat foot. And again, we look at strengthening exercises and additional support where necessary. So in summary, if you have a flat foot, it is really much guided on if you're developing symptoms around it, and that's where we would start to treat it. But if you're not having any symptoms and you don't have any issues with it, it is not something to worry about, as it may be just a normal variation of your anatomy. So if you have one, put, comment in below and ask us any questions you'd like about flat feet.